Wrestling Theology Fellowship will return to Carmel, Indiana on May 14th for the Magical World of Wrestling. It is truly going to be a magical night featuring some of the best independent professional wrestling in all of the Midwest, or dare I say, the entire country. Magical World of Wrestling will feature a King of WTF gauntlet match where the winner will be crowned the King of Wrestling Theology Fellowship in a special coronation ceremony. Vying for this crown and the right to call themselves king as they rule over all of WTF are the handlebar haberdasher Marion Fontaine, who we last saw in the 40-man Blizzard Brawl match last November. Brett Havoc, who came up short at the last WTF event in a number one contenders match against Stacey Alexander, but now hopes to course correct in this regal gauntlet. The handsome devil Adam Rorgis, also last seen in the 40-man Blizzard Brawl match, wants you to believe in him as future king. Jared Kripke, who most recently faced Apollo's star in singles competition at the last WTF event, Kripke will get the chance for revenge during this gauntlet, as the veteran Apollo star himself is our next entrant in this gauntlet match. The Naptown Nightmare, Juwan Thomas, is another competitor here in this gauntlet match who was also last seen in the Blizzard Brawl match last November. Aaron Anarchy, one half of the 8-Bit Punks, will be joining this match. And finally, Aaron's tag team partner, the King of the Arcade, Damian Cole, is our final entrant, looking to add another king to his list of titles. Wrestling Theology Fellowship fans, follow us on social media at Twitter and Instagram at Wrestling Theo and on Facebook at WTF Wrestling Theology. Magical World of Wrestling will feature more than just wrestling. The world-famous magician John Mobley, also known as Johnny Magic, will be on hand to perform magic and illusions throughout the show. Johnny Magic has been featured on Penn & Teller's Fool Us, so this is one the whole family definitely will not want to miss. Joined by a randomly selected member of our audience, take a deep breath and open your mind to Johnny Magic. Good evening. Like Allison said, my name is Johnny Magic. Of course, that's just a stage name. My real name is Jonathan Magic. <laughs> Hi there, what's your name? Genevieve. Genevieve, that's a nice name. How do you, how do you feel? I feel scared. Scared? Nervous? Nervous? Yeah. Don't worry. My goal is that you sit in this chair and just feel as relaxed and as comfortable as you can be in front of all these lights and cameras. Yeah, yeah. You know, which brings up an interesting point. You know, you would think on this stage in front of the pen and teller that I would be filled with anxiety, but I'm not. And that's simply because I've learned how to relax and clear my mind through meditation. Tonight, I'm going to be guiding you through a magical meditation. Okay. And when we're done, See that gift right there? That's for you. It's a gift that's going to help you remember this experience forever. Okay. Now, during the meditation, I am going to ask you very simple questions. And all I ask is that when you answer, just give us a simple one-word answer based on your experience. Sound good? Sounds good. Great. Go ahead and close your eyes. Good. Picture this in your mind's eye. You're standing in a large, green, lush forest. It's your happy place. And as you look to your right, you notice a path and you start pushing through the trees and leaves and you're moving through and then you see it, a large red door. As you approach the door, you start to open it. You're very curious, Genevieve. And as you reach for the handle, I want you to look and I want you to notice in your mind's eye that there's a little log. And on that log is a little animal, Genevieve, and it's, it's sipping a cup of tea. It's got a little monocle too, it's so cute. <laughs> Genevieve, my question to you is, what is the animal? Pig. <laughs> okay, a pig, very good, you're doing great. I want you to think about what's next. I want you to walk through this door. And as you get to the other side, Genevieve, you're completely weightless. You're completely free because you're standing on the moon. And as you look up, you see millions of stars all around you. And then you notice the weather, Genevieve. 
I want you to notice the weather. Kind of a strange question. We are on the moon after all. But what's the weather? Very rainy. Rainy? <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're doing great. You really are doing great. We got to get you out of this rain, Genevieve. But picture this in your mind's eye. Something's coming from far away. It's coming towards you. And here's why it's coming. It's coming to pick you up and take you home. What is it? Train. <laughs> Genevieve, I want you to notice that driving the train, it's a spider. It's a big purple spider. Now, Genevieve, you're gonna notice that it's playing with something. Well, as you get closer, you know exactly what it's playing with. This is the most important question of all, Genevieve. <laughs> What's the spider playing with? A piano. A piano, okay. <laughs> Let's give Genevieve a round of applause. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Let's review. You said you, you saw a pig sipping a cup of tea. You said when you were on the moon, it was raining. Yeah. Uh, when something was coming towards you, it was, you said a train, a bit old fashioned. Uh, and then when you were getting on the train, you said a spider was playing a piano. I don't think this will come to any surprise to anyone, but just to be fair, be completely honest, did anyone at any time tell you to say those specific answers? No. Obviously. <laughs> <sighs> I did say this was a magical meditation, and that's because it always gets the same result. Stand up. You, were, you did such a good job. This gift is for you. It's something I made a little bit ahead of time. What you'll see here is we have a pig drinking a cup of tea. He's on a train. You can notice he's in the rain. And there's that spider playing the piano. That's the magic of meditation. Give her a round of applause. Wow, Johnny Magic! Magical World of Wrestling will also see a first round matchup in the Women's Championship Tournament as Crystal Lane faces Bailey McRoberts. Crystal Lane calls herself the classiest and sassiest, but it'll take more than sass to advance in this tournament. We saw Lane back at Freedom 2021, where she came up short in singles competition. Now, she looks to turn that around on the path to gold. The Riot Girl Bailey McRoberts is a newcomer to wrestling theology, and a debut spot here in the Women's Championship Tournament is certainly nothing to scoff at. She'll be looking to prove she has what it takes to carry gold here in WTF. Hey Wrestling Theology fans, go check out the Wrestling Theology 2022 trading cards available now. You can get one card pack of seven, or you can get a full set of 50 cards for $20. That's the full set of 50 for $20. Last month at Heroes and Legends 16 in Fort Wayne, the Wrestling Theology Fellowship United States Championship was defended. Paragon had recently regained the championship and is defending the U.S. title here against Scotty Young in a rematch from Wrestling Theology Presents The Best. We'll take you now to that match taking place at Heroes and Legends. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first year official Josh Patterson. Introducing... Fans, we are underway for our third match here at Heroes and Legends 16. Oh my fans. Scotty Young accompanied the ring by his agents. Mr. Beck Swisser with the most interesting shoes I have ever seen. And a Paisley jacket, and uh, to my friend Zane Paisley, I'm sorry. Scotty Young has made several appearances for Heroes and Legends. Resistance Pro, the predecessor to the modern NWA, and he is quite the competitor on the independent wrestling scene. And tonight he faces off against Paragon and it is not the first meeting between these two individuals.
And Scotty Young, clearly not so much a fan favorite here in Fort Wayne. And fans, the world star, Mr. Protect Your Neck. Paragon making his debut for Heroes and Legends here tonight at Heroes and Legends 16. Paragon finding several fans at ringside. Paragon not lacking in confidence. That is the politest way I've ever seen a wrestler asked to introduce himself. Normally, uh, ring announcers uh, are talked over. Paragon bringing a championship from the promotion Wrestling Theology out of Carmel, Indiana, specifically to taunt Scotty Young as Paragon defeated Scotty Young for that very championship at a recent Wrestling Theology show. And credit to Paragon. Scotty Young is no stranger to mind games, and Paragon showing him he knows how to play him himself. Oh my, the Wrestling Theology United States Championship is on the line here tonight, fans. Paragon confidently defending this championship outside of Wrestling Theology. I've seen him do this before successfully. Will that confidence pay off here this evening? And Paragon's working with a referee he's never seen before against a competitor who has been willing to leverage his agents, one might say. 
And these two competitors, no strangers to one another, circling. Collar and elbow tie up. Sadie immediately breaks away. Once again, what are these two competitors going to do that know each other's style so well? Side headlock shot off. Scotty Young with a shoulder tackle. Posing for the crowd. Hip toss. Blocked and reversed. Side headlock takedown. Scotty Young reverses and both gentlemen back up. And the fans liking the chain wrestling action here this evening. Fans, Scotty and Paragon circle again. Collar and elbow tie up. Paragon side headlock, wrenching it down. Scotty trying to create some separation. Standing switch to a hammer lock. Back to the side headlock. Feeling out process here. Paragon taking Scotty down, maintaining that side headlock. Scotty trying to flip into a pinning, get a one count. Scotty Young trying for a head scissors, blocked. Wonderful chain wrestling here to start off with. Side headlock in there, back up. Scotty Young undoing the twists and not of Paragon. Top wrist lock. Irish whip and Scotty Young scowling at the cameraman. Big right hand, chops, combination from Paragon to Scotty Young. Irish whip, clothesline ducks. German suplex, ho oh ho! Block turnaround, STF. Ooh, jockeying for position. Scotty Young rolls through, Paragon beckons. Oh, schoolboying Scotty Young and kicking the arm. Oh, German suplex. And Scotty Young conferring with Beck Swisher. Top wrist lock. Small joint manipulation. Gr grinding Scotty Young's hand into the mat. Paragon, Irish whipped into the corner. Blocked, Scotty Young to the outside. Oh, once again, handful of hair. Scotty Young yanking Paragon to the mat. Paragon could be finding himself in trouble here. Scotty Young, no stranger to heroes and legends. New crowd, new venue. Paragon might be taking a moment to adjust and Scotty Young knows this ring and knows the advantages and he's pressing them right now. Oh, Scotty Young stomping on the sternum of Paragon who is draped across that bottom rope. You would expect the referee perhaps giving a five count here, but giving some leeway. I suspect the logic here is that you know, Paragon voluntarily made this a championship match. So the referee's understandably gonna give a little bit of leeway. And Paragon's offensive maneuver blocked by a vicious eye rake from Scotty Young. And once again, Scotty Young blatantly grabbing the hair and Josh Patterson again, giving some leeway. And Scotty Young just grinding the knee into the face of Paragon. 
and the confidence that Paragon started this match off with seems to be ebbing. Hopefully he can string some uh, offense together. Scotty Young calling for silence and just kicking Paragon in the back. And fans, Scotty Young baited the crowd. That was a vicious kick, tagged the spine, but he didn't go for sound, he went for impact. Tagging just the spine with the tip of his toe and continues his punishment with that vicious chin lock. Ooh, and Scotty Young has great mind the right arm of Paragon. Adjusting position, trying to keep Paragon from escaping. The fans getting behind Paragon as he gets back to a vertical base. Elbows. Chin lock released. Paragon off the ropes. Oh, double back elbow. Paragon down and Scotty Young, the confidence is returning, just paint brushing Paragon's face with his boots. And that angered Paragon and he looked up challenging Scotty and that was exactly what Scotty wanted because he used the opportunity to just kick Paragon in the chest. But Paragon slingshotting Scotty Young into the corner. Paragon trying to get a second win in adrenaline. Removing some wrist wrap. Headbutt, house of fire. Both men rocked. Scotty with a boot to the midsection. Both competitors jockeying for position. Oh! Back body drop blocked with a big knee to the chin. Oh! Tiger style knee and Scotty Young tooth gum. He hopes it was gum, flew out of the ring. Big stinger style splash. And Paragon with strong control here. Wild swing, oh ho! Olympic style slam, Paragon with the two count. And Beck Swisher would not have had the time to interrupt. You can see he's having a bit of a heart palpitation on the outside, thinking his, uh, his talent would not be victorious here this evening. And Paragon choosing his strike. And fans, Beck Swisher normally, oh! Sling blade style front bulldog. And Beck Swisher, what's he doing here? Fans, can we get a camera shot of this? Beck Swisher is taking his chain off. Fans, I assume we're going to see him pass that to Scotty Young. And right there, behind the referee's back, Scotty Young has secured the chain of Beck Swisher. And Scotty making no effort to hide it. He was literally showing it to the fans. And the fans are losing their mind, and I think it's to his benefit. Paragon's not going to know what's coming. Paragon, offensive maneuver, he's in control, but Scotty Young has the chain in his fist. All Scotty needs is an opportunity. Oh, right there, right hand. Chain assisted and the referee didn't see it. Fans, do we have a new wrestling theology champion? Hey. And Scotty Young victorious over the use of a chain that nobody saw, but the referee didn't see it. Oh! Scotty Young forget to discard the evidence. And the referee has seen it. Undeniable.
caught by the referee, but the decision has been rendered. What's the referee going to do? The referee is taking the championship away. Scotty Young escaping. Day, uh, Beck Swisher not nearly as lucky. Good night, Agent Swisher. Fans Paragon victorious. With thanks, no thank to a little bit of luck here. Had Scotty Young been a bit more efficient in his cheating, there would have been a new champion. But nevertheless, Paragon victorious after the referee reversed his decision. Kudos to referee Josh Patterson for overturning the decision once evidence was presented to him, oddly enough, by Scotty Young. What a debut at Heroes and Legends 16 for Paragon. Have a good evening, Swisher and Scotty. Fans, there is more to come. You may recall at WTF The Best, Charlie Cruel competed in a women's championship tournament first round matchup against a surprise opponent, the general manager himself, Tony Dynamite. Charlie emerged victorious in that match, but in true Tony Dynamite fashion, he's found a way to reverse the decision. Tony says that since Charlie did not compete against a woman in her tournament matchup, her win does not count. As such, Charlie is back on the hunt once again for a first win in the Women's Championship Tournament, and at Magical World of Wrestling, she'll face Shalance Royal. Shalance is making her WTF debut here, but has wrestled in many different companies, including AEW. Charlie will not want to take her lightly. Well, looky cookie. <laughs> I love hearing this because my match with Tony Dynamite apparently was not part of the tournament match, which was obviously right. So, the actual tournament match is going to be against none other than Shalance Royal. Yes, a match that I've actually been waiting for for quite a while. So, this is going to be super fun, and uh, that title is going to be around my waist, you know what I'm saying? So, let's just get one thing straight real quick, Shalance. Wrestling theology is my home. It's been my home since 2017, before I even began wrestling, okay? You're coming into my playground, <laughs> and you're not going to be welcome. Well, everyone's always welcome to my playground, right? But this has a title on the line. Come on. And let you be part of my playground this time. Maybe after I beat you, you can be part of my playground anytime you want. How about that? <laughs> Let's play. Ladies and gentlemen, all galaxies, all spaces, all dimensions, it's your boy Shook D. And they know me as a journeyman and an international man, a very high flavor. But when I want to feel like home, and I want some of the best possible professional wrestling that you can get your hands on. You have no other choice but to tune in to Wrestling Theology Fellowship. Whether you watch it online or whether you come in here live, this is where it's good. And when you know what's good, you do what you should. WTF, get in this house. So, I'm here to talk to you guys tonight. Obviously, there's a message that goes with the uh, Wrestling Theology. Uh, Rich, thank you so much for putting this on. We've been coming, I've got five daughters. I've got three of them here tonight with me. Uh, so we've been coming for a long time, uh, since it was over in Carmel. Uh, and that's where I'm a firefighter. And so I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about kind of a calling. So, and that's how I became a firefighter and, and why I did it. So, uh, started about, uh, oh, let's see, 22, 23 years ago, maybe 24, uh, I was a senior in high school, and my best friends and I had gone for senior skip day. We had gone uh, to Crawfordsville and went to uh, Turkey Run. We were on the way back from Turkey Run. We had been up late the night before, 
Uh, my mom warned me, kids. You should listen. My mom said, Tim, I'm worried you guys haven't slept. I think you could, you know, it could be dangerous. I said, ah, mom, we'll be fine. Well, I should have probably paid closer attention. So that's all you kids. Your moms have a sick intuition, and dads, but uh, about things. So we were headed back, and I was following my best friends in their car, and it was a, uh, they, they kind of, they veered one way and then veered another and hit head on about 70 miles an hour into another car. So at this time, I'm 18 years old. I just watched my best friend, so it was Chris Marshall was driving, uh, Jay Platt was in the front seat, and then Colleen and Tim Mosher in the back seat. And it hit head on, and I've been a firefighter for 19 years now, and that is still probably one of the most horrific things I had ever seen. The car lifted up, it was almost unrecognizable when it happened. So myself and Andy, my other friend who was in the car with me, we got out, and I ran over to the car, and we couldn't hardly, we couldn't get in it. The car was totally unrecognizable. Chris was kind of up against the dashboard like this in the steering wheel, and he was kind of awake. Jay and Tim were sort of just buried into the dashboard, and Colleen was starting to come too. So as an 18-year-old kid, when you're watching movies, cars always blow up, right? So in my mind, I thought, this car's going to blow up, we've got to get them out. Probably not a good idea. You should wait for the firefighters to try to do that. But we got on top of the car. I actually grabbed the tire iron, and I broke the back windshield, and I crawled in because uh, at the time I was a lifeguard. I just wanted to check and see if anybody was breathing, try to check airways. Uh, I couldn't get them, so then Andy got on top of the car, and he actually started kicking the door. And another gentleman who lived right there on the side of 32 came out. People came to help us. We pulled the door down and actually were able to bend it down and uh, got Chris out of the car. We laid him on the side of the road. He was awake. And I said, Chris, don't move. He said, his back hurt. That's all I really knew. Then we got Colleen out. She was awake but had what we would an obvious concussion. So about every 10 to 30 seconds, Colleen would say, Tim, what happened? Where are we? And I'd be like, Colleen, you're in an accident. Just sit down. We're trying to figure it out. 911 has been called. And uh, she asked every 30 seconds, Tim, what happened? Where are we? So we move forward, and uh, the fire department shows up. And at this point, I can't really tell how Jay or Chris are doing. They are so bad. They're in this dashboard. We can't get to them. And the fire department shows up, and they start using the jaws of life. You know, we call them extrication tools, the cutters, the spreaders. And they start peeling back that car and digging away and working their way to it. In the meantime, the police officers asked me to call call their parents, you know, and I had to call my best friend's parents and tell them, you know, I've got Jay, Chris and Colleen here, they're awake, I'm talking to them, but when I called Jay's parents, uh, the line was busy and they didn't leave a call waiting, that was the thing we used to have to deal with kids, but, uh, so my dad, I called him and he went over and got Jay's mom and they said he's in a bad accident, they need to come to Crossroads School Hospital, and about that time, uh, the firefighters got Chris or Tim out first, and they got him onto an ambulance, got him out of there. Then they got Jay, and he was actually still awake when they got him out. I was right next to him. He had broke his jaw in four places. So it was pretty horrific. He was down here. He had severed his lip all the way through, severed his eye around, 70 staples in his head, several broken ribs, severed his calf muscle all the way through, and he didn't look good. And so I walked with him as they got him on the ambulance. I kept saying, Jay, you're going to be all right, buddy. You're going to be okay. So they, uh, they ended up moving him and lifelining him to Methodist. Well, you know, miracles happened because Jay made a full recovery, so did Tim. Jay had his mouth wired shut for about four months, but full recovery, even played rugby for Purdue. I'm a godfather to his third child. He lives down the street. Everybody's okay. Chris had a fractured vertebrae, but made it okay. Colleen's okay. We're all still great friends today. So that was the first miracle uh, that I got to witness because they should not have been okay. So somebody was looking over them that day. But at that time, in my short life of 18 years, that was the most horrific thing that had ever happened to me. And it became a defining moment for me, though, and that's what I wanted to talk about. There's moments in life that you may see or find or have that, that just seem like it's the pit of despair for you. It's brought you down, and it's what you do in those moments and how you turn them around. So for me, I was fortunate. It was my friends. They were okay, but I started thinking about what I saw that day in those firefighters, and I saw them reach in and pull my best friends out of this car near their death. And so I, I started thinking about it. I went to school at the time uh, to be a teacher, but it just kept being in the back of my mind. It just kept being in the back of my mind. Something was calling me. And uh, I was on the uh, five and a half to six year plan in college. Uh, I was really good at the social side of school. Not so great at the school side sometimes. But I remember calling my then uh, girlfriend, now wife, and I said, Teresa, I said, I think I have switched gears. I just feel like something's telling me I, I need to be a firefighter. And uh, so I did, I switched here, started doing fire science, started applying all the fire departments. And 19 years ago, I got hired uh, to call the fire department 
and uh, it has been the greatest journey of my life. I love what I do. Uh, I get to help people. Uh, I, I get to work with some of the best people you can imagine. One, one's over here, another, uh, one of our Cromwell firefighters over there. Uh, and Ali's got uh, triplet. And uh, the last one I've ever found is three of them here. But uh, I have to say, it was that moment for me. And so, especially you kids out there, you're going to go through moments and times in your life that you think that are just, how can I come back? How can I pick myself up from this? And it's what you do in those times or when you have something that impacts your life, how you learn from that and where you go. And so, like I said, for me, that became my defining moment. I wanted to be able to do what those guys um, and those firefighters did for, for my friends. And uh, I, I can't say enough uh, how happy I am. Uh, not that my best friends were an accident. I'm not happy about that. But I'm happy that that moment became something for me. And it's expanded in a lot of different ways. You know, I wanted to be an educator. Uh, something that was also in there, I got to coach wrestling. I coached wrestling for 10 years at Carmel High School. Um, I get to do other things that are really cool in the fire department. I'm a public information officer, so I, I talk with the media. They let me go on sometimes, and I do some healthy cooking and fitness stuff for uh, Channel A. And it's kind of opened all kinds of, of doors. And a lot of that all stems from that moment for me where uh, it really was a, a terrible moment. That define. So it's kind of when you can think, I'm sure all of us here have these moments that we have in our lives, and we can think, man, how can I how can I learn from that? What can I do with it? Why did it happen to me? Why did it happen to my friends? And so for me, I just took that moment and really built on it. And it's kind of something that every day when I show up to work, I remember, you know, I, when I treat a patient, I treat them like it's my best friends, like it's my mom, like it's my dad. And so that's just a little bit of how, how for me, I think that God called to me to do something that I love. And so I just you know, tell all of you, you know, I hope that if you have those moments that you realize you're not alone, uh, that someone's there with you. And, and I can say that. I mean, we've seen it. We see it every day in what we do, miracles that happen as a firefighter that we get to witness uh, and patients that we run on. And I know it's been you know, a tough couple of years for everybody. So, uh, you know, it's a few times. So we definitely want to pray for those that have been suffering over the last two years and, and those right now praying also to the world. So, uh, we can come out here and have a good time. That's uh, really what I have uh, to say about all of that. So thank you for listening to me. Uh, thank you again, Rich, for having me out here and for, for wrestling theology. Hope you guys have a good time and uh, enjoy the rest of the show. Dylan Cole, the former referee J.B. Stewart, has been doing everything in his power to undercut, undermine, and frankly cheat Anthony Toatelli out of win after win. At the last WTF event, we even found out that the tag team champions, the highlight reel, are hired guns, so to speak, coming to the aid of Dylan Cole. This month at Magical World of Wrestling, Dylan Cole will team with the highlight reel to face Anthony Toatelli and Chuckles the Clown, Anthony's rival turned unlikely ally. Anthony and Chuckles are outnumbered here in this handicap match, but we've learned to never count out a crazy clown or a flowing Samoan. Elbow drop catches nothing but canvas. Oh. Welcome to the show, kid. Cole draped across the ropes, gets a chop. Toatelli very clearly just warming up here. Fans immediately calling for another chop. European uppercut. Oh, just thudding. Also, let's point out, very clearly not Anthony Toatelli's full power behind that. Not chair. at all. Oh, that one did, though. Wow. Cole is rocked. Road style drop to the mat and a spot kick to the chin. Dylan Bravado. Leaping kick to the jaw for his trouble. Dylan Cole getting his head kicked in thus far in this match. Yeah. Yeah. So Tully setting up for... Oh. oh! Drops him right on his face. Front suplex just a pet. <laughs> Slingshot into that boot. Cole rose the outside. Boxing ghosts over here. I'm winning. Shades of Rod Street. Yeah. 
Uh-oh. Totelli coming to the outside. Oh, taking the fight to Dylan Cole. I heard that thud. They're right in front of us here at the announce desk. Oh, oh. my gosh. Look at the agony on Dylan Cole's face. Look at the redness. You can, you can see it. Forming around the edges of the shirt. Toatelli throws Cole into the ring. Dylan Cole thumbs to the eyes, not even attempting to hide it. I, I'd fault him, but what offense does he have at this point? Big boots to the midsection. This is taking advantage of an unprotected Anthony. I mean, he might crack a rib that way. Like, I, I it, it's effective. I don't hate it as a strategy at this point. Big chop. Once again, this is Cole's debut match, and he is laying in offense on Anthony Toatelli. Credit where credit is due. Unique chin breaker. Impressive. Cole goes for the pin. Gets a two count. Out off of the clothesline neck breaker. Dillard, Dillard seemingly arguing with himself. He thought he had this. The, del the delusions run deep here. I, I'll be honest. I thought this match was going to look like when Stacy Alexander faced Crash just a, just a bit ago. Just oh. completely decimating. I'd say welcome back to reality, Dylan, but I, I don't know if you're there yet. Big head of steam, flying forearm. Now we're seeing the flow in Samoan. Shining wizard style knee. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Northern Lights suplex. Once again, Cole maybe out on his feet. Oh. <laughs> Superman punch. Totally goes for the pin. Dylan Cole <laughs> kicking out. Why would you kick out? I mean, give him credit, but why? He he knows he knows he's gonna get hit in the face again, right? Oh, shoulder up. Wait a second. Oh, pretzeling him up. Oh, rear naked choke. Wait, wait Tony, Tony Dynamite. Dynamite's on the stage. The highlight reel. Highlight reel. Taking it out. Biding their time. Well, we talked about it. We said it was a possibility. Whoever Tony Dynamite. Lucky Haskins is calling this a no contest. Why? Is he claiming that, that they attacked Dylan to break up the. Chuckles coming out ringside. Chuckles clearing the ring, saving Anthony Toatelli. I, I, wow. Highlight reel very clearly on the payroll of Tony Dynamite. Thank goodness for Chuckles coming out to save the day. The highlight reel doesn't seem to agree with that. The highlight reel just got put into a match. I think the highlight reel know exactly what they just got themselves into. This quick payday turned into maybe not what they were looking for. What are you doing? <laughs> yes! Whoa, you did it! I saw the part with the 
sleeper hold and the boom shakalaka and then they tried to fight you and I came in and I said, ah, 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 and they ran away, they ran away and it was hilarious and did you see the little dance? And do you remember what happens next time when we destroy the highlight reel? Ooh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I got excited. Anthony Toatelli, people have been asking me why in the world would I come out and help this man? Why? We hate each other. We've hit each other with guitars, right? That was you, right? I think so. Yeah! I remember your fist. I certainly remember your fist. But other thing that I remember is, God, uh, it's that respect thing. See, I've got to respect. I've got to respect for you. And I know that you bring the best out of people, so there's only one person that I need to be tagging with. What? Yes! And so it's going to be Anthony Toatelli and Chuckles the Clown King, ooh, going against the highlight reel. And what's that other guy? What's that other guy? What's that other guy? The little zebra man. The little uh, zebra man. Dylan. Dylan. Dylan? Dylan Cole. Dylan Cole! Ha <laughs> ha! Big strong boy, let's... I'm excited! And I need a partner. Oh, the door closed. Say hello to the bad guy, Scott Hall. And I'm inviting everyone to come check out Wrestling Theology Fellowship. Get together with some brothers and talk about Jesus. At WTF The Best, Crash Jackson was playing some 4D chess. He managed to goad Stacey Alexander into putting his newly won number one contendership on the line literally minutes after Alexander won it in the first place. Jackson was able to overcome the exhausted Space Cowboy to finally become the number one contender and to finally have the Wrestling Theology Fellowship belt of truth within his grasp. Now, at Magical World of Wrestling, Crash Jackson will face champion Jake Carter for the WTF Championship. Neither man knows the word quit, and neither man has ever stepped down from a fight. So fans, expect a monumental encounter here. Theology, Mercer used to come to the ring with an entourage, and they would help him if necessary, but uh, I think Mercer alone is more frightening. Mercer alone is extremely frightening. Listen, these chairs are comfortable, but you still don't want to be in them. And Shane Mercer is giving you chops. Shane Mercer, I think, signaling for the train to come around. Photographer in place around the world. Oh, chairs taken out. Jake Carter taken out. I appreciate the holy cow chant. We are in a church. Holy cow, indeed. Carter fighting Shane Mercer off. Carter miraculously is back to his feet. <laughs> Carter was flattened there. Mercer trying to put the uh, moniker Unbreakable to the test. Oh no! Oh! Oh my gosh! Mercer had his first attack attempt blocked, but Mercer pivoted and just dropped Carter on his knees. Absolutely brutal there. And, and Carter has injured his knee in the past. Carter taking the fight, or Mercer taking the fight to Jake Carter rather. Oh no. Wrenching on that leg. Mercer pulling Carter to his feet. Oh, clubbing blows. And Mercer's been angry. He he felt that he 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 showed mercy during their ladder match when Jake Carter legitimately injured his leg before Hadley interjected and, and, and screwed both competitors. I do not think Mercer is going to give Carter that quarter this time. No, certainly not. Look at this. Ring post figure four, perhaps? Oh, my goodness. And that ring post has got that extra fin on it. These ring posts are reinforced double impact. Oh, again, bending the leg around the ring post. 
Oh, ring oh. post figure four. You called for it. Here it is. Mercer hooks it up. Oh, my Second goodness. Second attempt, and he nails it. Up to a four count. Breaks free. And Mercer is so committed, he didn't get it in that first attempt. He immediately pivoted it and locked it in. And if Carter isn't wearing a knee brace now, he might be in the future. I'm not sure Carter is going to be able to stand at this point. Front face lock, and somehow Carter is standing. Oh, Carter's up. Shane holds Count it vertically. It. All the blood to Carter's head. Oh! Drops him down. The ring bounced with enough force that the aprons all puffed up. Goes for the pin. Fans, there is an air pressure reference right there. Fans, I hope you're enjoying this match. Once again, Mercer transitions from hard-hitting offense to submission wrestling on a dime. Carter trying to just, just flail his fist to get out of here. And Mercer, not always known to be the, the, the most adept submission wrestler, but lock a couple of joints, <laughs> apply strength. These submissions are the, are the perfect complement to the rest of Mercer's offense Grapevine. Oh! Oh. They just wear out the limbs of Jake Carter and then wrench them up into a submission. It's working quite well for Shane Mercer. He's got a variant of a cloverleaf here. And watch, yes. Look, Mercer has given himself room to wrench that down more. So as soon as Jake starts to make progress to the rope, he's going to dial it up a notch. Carter's almost there. He's almost got the rope. Oh, he got it. Mercer's holding on to it right until four. Mercer counting along with referee Donovan. He didn't say, I've got till five, but you understood that is exactly what he meant. Precisely. Iron Demon bringing a tremendous game plan here. He, if, if, if this fails, he could always fall back on the power and the strength. But he's trying to take Jake Carter apart, and it's working. Clubbing blow across the face of Jake Carter. Carter collapses, struggling to get to his feet as, as the Iron Demon leers over him. Fans calling for Carter to get back in this. We know he has the fighting spirit of a champion. Oh, oh. Now we're seeing it from his knees, fighting back against Shane Mercer. Up to his feet, big forearms, off the ropes, holding onto the leg. Oh no. Gorilla Press catches him, big power slam. Goes for the pin. Carter stays alive, once again holding on to that knee. How many minutes are we into this match and Mercer just gorilla pressed Carter into a 360 power slam. And there, Cloverleaf applied and he's turned it over. Right back to it. Oh, Carter is in no man's land. So fans, the way Mercer's applying this is a little bit different. He's wrenching the knee, and now he's putting all that pressure on Carter's lower back. Somehow, against all odds, Carter makes it to the rope, but Don Shane pulls him back in. And Donovan is not calling for the break after that. Mercer has got a stroke of luck here. Carter, oh, Carter manages to flip over Mercer. A tremendous counter, only got a one count, but if Merce, if Carter had, had got the leg, that could have been three. 
Carter's favoring that leg now to, to such a degree. It appears he can't put weight on it. Oh, Mercer gets Carter Vince up. Vince call it. Oh. Incomplete bench press, but Carter may regret getting out of it because in landing on his feet, his knee just buckled. Absolutely gave way to Jake Carter's knee. Instinct betrayed Jake Carter right there. I think the gorilla press would have been less painful than that knee buckling. Mercer slaps across the face. Carter blocks. How about a slap of his own? Mercer. Mercer, you think you're a champion? Show me what you got. Ask and ye shall receive. Mercer came into this match with a chip on his shoulder. Carter's showing him what a champion is. That knee. And enough of a distraction that Mercer taking control. Rear waist lock. Broken. Mercer rolls through. Oh. oh my goodness. To the throat, Carter. Oh! Carter goes catches under. Mercer. Just slamming that huge shoulder. And Carter just muscling Mercer into a cross face. Shane's got to do something to get out of this. He's a long way from the rope. He's working towards it. I don't know if he can make it that far. Carter may have made a Mercer might have made a strategic mistake. Oh, but he finally made it. Wow. I thought he went the wrong direction for a second. Carter hangs on to it and, and we flip through. Mercer perhaps trying to stand up into a fireman's carry. Wow, the power of Shane Mercer. Carter pushes him away. Pops him up. Oh! oh! Pop up powerbomb blocked into a Frankensteiner. Carter can't believe it. Mercer spins. Carter ducks under. Fireman scary once more. The leg. That oh! Did he hit the V? He hit the TKO. Carter hitting an F5 style maneuver. And we saw it, folks. That knee nearly gave out of Jake, for Jake Carter. I'm not sure that he can pull that off again. Mercer, though, is rocked. Maybe this is going to be enough for Jake Carter. Carter, Carter is what? he going up top? He can't possibly. How's he going to climb? The man is effectively on one leg at this point. Mercer's the pin has got up. Carter's daughter on FaceTime. Carter's mom is at ringside. Jake is gingerly getting to the top, but that's enough. Mercer spin a Rooney up. Oh. Oh my Pele kick. Ted Lasso, eat your heart out. Carter draped on the top. And Mercer seemingly just got his second wind. Not good news. Moonsault and battery. Oh, he's looking for it. He's got it. Back him up. flip, fall away, slam. He oh. hits it. Oh. Carter rolls through. What? He gets it. Jake Carter is victorious. Jake Carter steals one. Shane Mercer can't believe it. Tony Dynamite is out here at the commentary booth. What a champion is Jake Carter, and what a match between these two.